Hello and welcome to the Business Made Easy show. I'm your host, Fiona Hall, and I'm bringing you a interview show that is to help you in your quest to make business easier. Now, each time I bring this show to you, I interview a guest on a specific area of business I know for myself and a lot of people listening in will be having challenges around. And the goal really is to speak to that expert and find some specific tips and tricks and things to look out for that we can then use back in our businesses. And I'm really privileged today to have the amazing Ros Ryan with me, and she's going to be helping us talk about Instagram. Now, the reason that I asked you to come on the show is I recently did uh, a challenge that uh, Rosalind put out for Instagram, and I was blown away with the results. And I thought, she's the kind of lady we need to have on the show, and I'm really lucky that she said yes when I invited her on. So, but before I get into the interview with her, I'm going to do what I usually do, is tell you what about the Business Made Easy tribe. So over on Facebook, the link will be in the show notes, is the Business Made Easy tribe. It's a Facebook group for women in business who are growing a business and pretty much in the background also raising a family. Now, we are successful business owners in there. We're experienced. We have a lot of knowledge. But we're trying to grow our business and often we're alone. Often most of us are working from a home office or the small team. And it's lonely at the top sometimes. And we want to have a place to connect, to collaborate, to share knowledge and to learn from each other. And that's what the tribe's about. So if you're looking for a place where you get to access those things, come across and join us and invite yourself into the tribe. Now, before I get into the interview stage, there's also the next part of the show, which is my nugget of wisdom. And this theme that I've been running with, it's actually been for the whole year. Each year I pick a word, and my word for this year is collaboration. Now, the reason I picked that was I, at the end of every year, I do a bit of a check-in with myself and I look at what's working and what's not working in my business. And I am a social creature, like most of us, and I miss, one thing I miss about being in an office and being in an organisation is the people. And I miss that connection, the, the water cooler chats where you stop and check in and solve a problem with someone else who is on the same journey and has the same goals and mission as you. So what I've been looking at this year for myself and my business is ways to collaborate with other like-minded women and a few men and to help each other out in business. So collaboration is the big thing. The thing is, when you're going to collaborate, I've done it before, you can do it really badly and you can get yourself in a bit of a tangled knot and it can come out not so good. So I wanted to share with you a few tips I've got. I've got eight tips here for you when you're looking to collaborate with people things you should think about and check in with yourself and research on before you go and approach people. First of all, if you're thinking about a collaboration and the people you want to approach, you really have to like and respect that person and be willing to be challenged by them, to be asked questions about you and your business. So you have to feel pretty confident about yourself, but also really like and respect that person and pretty much have similar values and similar beliefs about customer service and how to approach customers and how to treat them. That's number one. The next part is being emotionally mature. <laughs> so being emotionally mature, that, what that means to me is I've got the ability to take on constructive criticism, take on tough questions and think about them and process them without getting my back up or getting shitty because you need to be able to challenge yourself and ask the tough questions sometimes to progress. And people who've got your best interests at heart will do that from a really um, caring and empathetic place. People who ain't got your back will do it from a place where they're trying to put you down. So you know, going back to stage one, picking the right person is gonna be really key in that process, right? Number three, you need to have a shared goal if you're gonna collaborate, and everyone has to buy into that. If people are running different agendas which aren't expressed, it'll bubble up and the collaboration will fall apart. Number four, you need to have real crystal, crystal, crystal clarity around who is doing what and the tasks that are assigned to the project that you're collaborating over. And what are you all bringing to the party? Like what expertise are you bringing in and how are you contributing? Then the next one is you have to own 
your mistakes because things happen and you have to have the emotional maturity going back to that one again to own it to deal with it to sort it out and to fix things if they need fixing the next thing is you need to be able to have uh, to project manage the project so you need to have someone who's good at dotting the i's crossing the t's managing and activating and making it happen and a shared place for storing your documents it might be trello it might be dropbox some other system where you can share the information about the project so everyone has access to it. So you're not playing the email forwarding around and I didn't get the email and all that kind of rubbish back and forth that can go on. The next thing is um, you need to have a, an agreed timeline and a commitment for what time, you know, when you're getting together and how it's going to progress. And the last thing is the complementary skill set. So you need to be sure that everyone, if you've got people who are too alike, um, then you're probably going to find there's a bit of crossover and maybe a little conflict. So that's my top tips for collaboration today. I hope you've got some value out of that. Love to hear your ideas too. So feel free to, con to contribute to that conversation. Um, I've started a conversation about that actually in the Business Made Easy tribe. So come and join in and share your ideas on that. Now, the next part of the show, we're going to get into the interview. First off, I'm going to interview um, Rosalind Ryan, give you a bit of background about Rosalind. So her business is Digifit, and she's recently renamed it, right? Is that right, Rosalind? I have. Like, it's, um, I'm still part of um, online marketing group. That, that's sort of my main business. But um, Digifit has sort of come about by, um, I guess, coaching and consulting and mm -hmm. keeping everyone digitally fit online. <laughs> nice. I love it. So um, Roz is a digital marketer and she's passionate about social media and she's been pretty heavily into it for the last nine years. And she loves helping businesses succeed with her skills and social media strategy for Instagram, Facebook, lead generation. Her favorite service based niches are fitness, hospitality and beauty. That's where she's got her most, probably most experience in. When she's not working, she's enjoying spending time with her two boys and her husband and competing in CrossFit competitions and obstacle racing. Super fit woman. <laughs> That's class is her downtime. I'm like, <gasps> thinking about it. <laughs> but she does love a good Pinot Gris and some potato chips. Who doesn't love chips? Yeah. <laughs> and now I came across uh, Rosalind, I think it's almost three or four years ago through a networking organization a few years back. And I was really impressed with her enthusiasm and passion for social media and the way she was able to just share quick nuggets which I was able to use so quickly in my business that it made a lot of sense um, and I just found it great um, to be able to have someone you can call on and go what's this about um, I remember a presentation she did on Facebook and I was like wow that's really valuable I can go and use that right now in my business I think I pulled my phone out and did something quite quickly and was able to action it so um, I love people like that in my life who doesn't want someone who can give you a tool that you can use straight away um, and she makes it really accessible, I think, to all of us, no matter where we're at in our journey on social media and um, adopting new technologies. Um, it can be a bit of a barrier, it can be a bit of a challenge, I know, for some people who aren't like me, a bit of a geek and early adopter. Um, but I think, Rosalind, what I noticed was that she makes it easy um, to, um, to take that stuff up and she's very approachable. So welcome, Rosalind. Thanks for agreeing to join me today um, on the Business Made Easy show. Awesome. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> cool. Now we're looking at what we're going to do to do a bit of a masterclass on um, Instagram. And we're going to talk about three themes um, Rosalind's brought up for us today. Um, knowing your audience and what interests them, number one. Number two, uh, creating great captions that get a reaction and engagement. Engagement's the key, right? Was, we all want the likes and the comments and the shares. We all want that because we know how it you know, grows our audience. Um, and then how to make really good use out of your bio on Instagram. I know, I think this is what made the biggest difference to my Instagram and the, 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 the um, engagement that I wanted. And I, I thought the her tips around that were so valuable. And it wasn't, it was just a few tweaks that made a massive difference. So um, tell us, Roslyn, about theme one, knowing your audience and what interests them. Yes, so uh, with, with Instagram, uh, it's really it's really easy to know what your audience likes just by the type of posts that you are posting. So for example, um, you know, if you are um, into fashion and jewelry and that's your niche, but you start posting about, um, I don't know, inspirational quotes and ice creams, um, 
you know, and you mix it up into your, I guess, your your content, you're not going to get the engagement. People are going to go, this is jewelry, this is fashion. Why am I seeing ice creams? And why am I seeing inspirational quotes? So if you're on Instagram, you need to know what your niche is and what your, tr- what your goal is. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you are fitness, then it has to be fitness. Fitness quotes, motivation, um, you know, pictures surrounding fitness, and also a link back to the service or the products that you're selling. Yeah. Good point. That's most important. So if you, you know, like quite often I get people, they start an Instagram account and it can quite easily become a product or brand and then can turn into being quite a personal account. Yeah. And what's happened is they've bought maybe a bit too much of their personal um, background into it and that doesn't interest people. Yeah. And you start to lose your engagement and you start to uh, lose your likes on Instagram and people will unfollow you. So knowing your audience is key. So think about whether you are a brand, an influencer, or whether you are selling a service. And Mm. think about, okay, what's it going to involve? Am I going to be pointing people into, you know, thinking about what they do every day with tips and quotes? Yeah. Am I going to be putting awesome pictures out there of my life and um, motivating them that way to use me as an influencer? Mm. So, yeah, knowing your audience is definitely key. And to do that, you can use hashtags to research where your audience is. Ah. And then actually have a look at the kind of content you're engaging with. Oh, that's a great tip. So, for example, um, I'm looking at business owners. That's kind of who I'm targeting. So if I typed in the hashtag business owner and had a look at some of the posts that are coming up and what people are posting. Yep, and entrepreneurs, that's another good one as well. Um, and putting that in and just see the top, the, basically the top nine posts in the Explorer feed will tell you ah. who's popular. They've, they've got to the Explorer feed and you can have a little nosy and stalk, stalk them and see what they're doing. So that's another thing. And all the easiest way is to look at someone who's doing what you do really well on Instagram, look yeah. at their account and duplicate it to, you know, basically fit, fit with you. Great. Awesome. So I should be following like Marie Folio or someone like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, the way to go is change it to your, you know, your thing. And yeah. Your tone. But your your niche. Working well on her site. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really good advice. That's cool because often I think you know you open a, a social media account and you kind of go, oh, what do I do now? Where do I start? Yeah. So that's the best place. It's a great place to start, and it's really achievable, I think, for most people to do that. Yeah. Fantastic. Very cool. So creating, um, oh, so, um, and, and so creating great captions uh, that get a reaction and engagement. Tell us more about um, how that works. Yep. So um, along the lines, of, I mean, Instagram is very visual. So your images yeah. need to be on key or, and your message in those visuals have to be on key. Um, but also, you know, don't be afraid to be cheeky um, or to put a caption that's going to get people engaged. So I quite often, you know, you could put comment with your favorite handbag. You know, comment if you, uh, um, you know, if you feel like you're going to kill it today, you know, like anything yeah. with a one-worded answer, people will engage with that. Mm. Um, also, you know, tag a friend who wants to travel to this destination with you. Yeah. Um, or, you know, tag a friend that needs help with her systems because she's basically <laughs> struggling <laughs> like <laughs> Because she was up to midnight last night and it's like, yeah, on her fourth cup of coffee and it's nine o'clock. <laughs> so, you know, making, making the captions into a graphic is really cool too because yeah. that's instantly what they see. Yeah. Um, and then I always use emojis, you know, if I can to, to, to get people. Emojis are fantastic. Yeah. Do you find that emojis get a lot of, um, get a lot of um, uh, attention, reaction? Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. If used in the right way, they do. Um, you know, if, if the graphic is the statement and has the wording in it, I tend not to put a hell of a lot in my caption. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I will just say, hey, click click down here with emojis or type thing, comment below. Um, the other thing you can always put with your graphics as well is, I guess with Instagram, it's always, you know, it's like everything, it's jab, jab, right hook, you know, give value, give value, value, go for the sale. Um, so whenever you are leading people to um, want them to, a call for action, so to speak, click yeah. the link in my bio. You put that in as your caption too. So you know, Great. interested in this? Click the link in my bio. Or would you like this? 
would you um with the link in your bio would you um do you change that out like so if you've got a special promotion that you're trying to get people to buy a specific product or service would you how long would you like would you do that for a month or a week or what i would, I would mix it up so i know people that have got links um different links to everything like a landing page for you know collecting emails um so they put like a link up there usually like a, a Bittle link or a google link um and so you can customize it as well yeah so yeah, I mean, you can have a link up there for 10 hours, 24 hours, you know. Usually when you put a post on Instagram and you give a call to action to click on the link for whatever the reason, yeah. um, you're going to get get your best value for buck in the first two hours of that post. Brilliant. So if you get a whole pile of people signing up or buying in that first two hours, I would then delete the post. And then perhaps later on in the day when it's the next popular time, you know, to post, pop it up again and tell them to go click on the link. Ah, yeah, it's great just advice. A way to play around with the um, yeah. algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I noticed what I've noticed is um, on Instagram is like, you know, people go and put photos and stuff like that. And I was wondering about your ideas on because, you know, people go and download photos, free photos, multi free photos and stuff. And you start seeing some of the same ones come up yeah. over again. With the, so obviously, obviously, everyone's got Typorama and used the Typorama mm -hmm. standard or whatever app or word swag or whatever, and then they've used the standard photos and then put a quote over them. Um, I start to go, oh, I've seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> um, which kind of loses its impact, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, well, yeah, they're, they're, that's why I always sort of use, um, I always use like Pixel Bay or the free websites because it's so many images on there that are free to use. Yeah. Um, customize them and I always there's there's always the most popular ones as well so with like a wood swag and type aroma that they're not going to be updating all the time with all the latest stuff it's just basically what's being loaded in there yeah um, I think for a quick block you know graphic with just words and maybe a plain background or something it's cool yeah you really want to make a point of difference um or upload your own I've kind of made a bunch of templates and um yeah. canva which has got my logo and image and stuff on them and i've just Absolutely. put them in there so i can put quotes on there yeah. when i want to make my own ones yeah and i think that's really good because that once again is if you make, can make your own and get your branding out there and have your logo and everything and that's that's the goal you know especially that's the next step up eh, is making sure that and when i'm looking at looking at stuff like how often do you think like you, you talked about the you know that one two and then the third was the sale did you do you think like in terms of um, Instagram how often you should kind of put in promotional stuff where you're offering products or a minimum, I'd say once at the very most twice a week but definitely once a week so awesome. you know giving value giving value then maybe one particular day whether it's a Wednesday you you know pop, pop a sale you know post Brilliant. it yeah yeah that's good to know because it's you know there's um the frequency of stuff can make such a big impact on social media, can't it? And if you get it wrong and you start, people feel like they're being spammed. Yes, and that's, that's the thing. I don't want to always see you trying to sell all the time. Yeah. So if you're giving value, giving tips, giving anything, and then once a week you go, hey, guys, this is blah, blah, blah. Click one, yeah. blah, we'll see you on the other side. I suppose product versus service would be different because product – people expect you to be selling a product more, would you say more often than a service? Yes, and a lot of Instagram pages as well, you know, you'll go on them and go, okay, this is a swimwear or this is tights or this is a fitness brand. And a lot of the time they will have the picture and then click link and bio or blah, blah, click link and bio or, you know, and that's fine. But I think I, I'd also, if you, are, if you are selling a product, you still need to be giving your audience some sort of value, you know, whether it's yeah. hey, Click the link in our buyer to get a 20% voucher. Yeah. Or something like that, or 50% off, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, Incentive, eh? Yeah, yeah. But also telling them, you know, why should they buy those types? Why, why are they good for you, you know? Yeah. And the testimonial, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And I suppose that um, even better would be a customer wearing the product to say, hey, I just received it, or unboxing. Yes. It's quite popular, eh? Yeah. So using brand influencers or micro influencers to get them to spread your content as well. Fantastic, cool. Number three, making good use out of the your bio on Instagram. So tell us about your top tips around that because I think for me that made a massive difference. <laughs> so, well, yeah, with the bio, a lot of people don't realise how powerful it is, and 
you've got your username, which is the top bit, but then you've got another name, which a lot of people don't realize is in bold. So it's the black one. And it's basically SEO. So you, anytime someone wants to search you, um, it's probably important you think, well, why would they search and find you? So um, using using words that are searchable, entrepreneur, you know, product specialist, system specialist, fitness instructor, you know, coach, all that sort of stuff. Those are words that you should use in the bold bit. And you can separate them with hyphens um, or emojis or whatever else. You only, I think you only get a certain amount of characters. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be pretty, pretty like think, okay, what's two words or, you know, especially if one's big, but this think, you know, I noticed when I changed mine, I got a, a, a load more interest in my page because people were, you know, obviously when I was coming up on search. So that's number one. Yeah. Um, number two, I would use your notes on your phone or, you know, um, if you're doing it on your desktop, use a word doc and actually just go in and do your bio so use emojis um to say like what you do like they're on their page so what do you do are you a blogger a travel lifestyler do you sell products um you might want to like you know mum to two boys and two dogs but i have an online uh, marketing business you know all that sort of stuff so as soon as they hit your page the first 20 seconds they want to know what value and why are they here yeah and I think a lot of people miss that. They just put their name and a, maybe a few, like a sentence, and then that's it. So, um, yeah, those those are really powerful, as you know, um, points to put in your bio. Yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. Very good tips. Um, when, when you um, are looking at um, someone's Instagram pages, um, what do you see as the kind of most common mistakes that people make? Um, really bad hashtagging, <laughs> <laughs> um, or two like, or they put hashtags in their comments. So what, what I find with that is it just when you put hashtags in your comment or your caption, um, it just gets mixed up with your message. You know, like you've just got all these hashtags. So it's really important to put those hashtags in a separate comment so that they're clear of your message, but yeah. that you're still re reaching everyone in, in the hashtag market that you've put down. Um, number two, people not realizing the importance of hashtags, you know, and not using all 30 of them. Um, yes, when, when I read that thing about 30, because I had no idea that, that that was a good idea. And I was just like, oh my God, how do I even get to 30? Where do I start? It was like such a, oh my God, where do I start with the hashtag? Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Like even, um, I quite often say, if you stick a photo up and you're having coffee, for example, and you've got your laptop, think about the, the situation, like you're, you know, work meeting, you know, um, digital, uh, you know, laptop style, like laptop lifestyle, you know, you've got all these sorts of things, you know, that you can include. And taking the venue, I often, I, I've, I've kind of got into the habit of taking the venue now. Yep, absolutely. Because once again, it's socialising with um, the venue, it's naming them, they're getting some social coverage of the person having, you know, a coffee there or yeah. a meal there or whatever. So the more you interact on Instagram, the more you, get, and people are way more sociable than they are on Facebook. They just are. I don't know why, but they are. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that, yeah, people are more likely to comment, right? People just come across you and comment, yeah. Yeah, and it's really funny because if you're really new to Instagram, you kind of think, okay, what's their agenda? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually an amazing networking tool. So once you, you know, once you establish it, like, you know, for example, yesterday I was like, who needs help with social media? Press yes. And I just thought, I'll give this a go. And I like had five people message me. So actually, I need help with social media. I'm like, sweet, give me an email address. Let's have a talk. You know, like... Awesome. Have a conversation and see what... So value. direct requests are working quite well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well as important is, is if people follow you, you can't just be on Instagram. And this is the other thing I see people doing. They get on Instagram, they open the account, they follow a few people, and then they leave it. You know, it's, it's, and it's important to engage with people all the time because it is social media. Yeah. So follow and comment um, on people you aren't going to grow on Instagram. So dedicate a time to go on there and, and check yeah. in. And yeah, and especially if they're um, your audience, if that's your niche and these are people you want to target, yeah, time to comment on what they're doing during the day or their photo or their image so they get to see you in their news feed more. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's been part of it for me as I went in. I, I did exactly that, you know, years ago and just kind of like, okay, I, I'm set up now. What do I do? <laughs> 
and knowing what the strategy is and, and you know having a you know having a plan of action is yeah. key right yeah absolutely yeah. yeah and the other another really good tip too is um instagram stories um which i'm going to touch a bit more on on the digifit group because i didn't really do much in the challenge but they're a gold mine so for example if you're following um maria um, oh, yeah 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 and she does stories, right? Which I'm sure she does. Yes. Um, comment, say like, hey, awesome, love the tip, whatever it is. The more you do that, the more she sees your name because it will come up because not many people do it. The more she sees you, she'll oh. and say, hey, this buddy from New Zealand, she's always commenting on my stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Opportunity. So. Great. You know, I do it with Lewis Howes. I'm forever waiting for him and Gary V to ring me up for a... <laughs> I oh, love you. <laughs> yeah. All right, man, when are you coming to New Zealand? Come on. <laughs> oh, funny. I, I follow Joel Com. I really like, he's uh, like the video, online video. And I've been following him because, you know, obviously I do interviews and I really like Facebook Live and I really enjoy video. You know, it's my medium. I really, it's my fun thing. Yeah. So, I, you know, he, I've jumped on, I did blabs with him and he, there was like 20,000 people watching and I was live in front of all these Americans going, oh. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Hi. <laughs> and then he did a live and he invited me on. He goes, oh, look, Fiona from Auckland's here. Hi, Fiona. And I came on. I was like, hi. <laughs> Starstruck, eh? Yeah, fangirl. <laughs> yeah. But it's really cool because I know that in that group, you know, I'm getting known. There's Fiona from New Zealand. She's really interested. And, yeah. you know. Absolutely. And it's a great way to reach out on Instagram and say, look, you know, I, I want to do a, an interview in my group or a podcast, you know, would you be interested? From New Zealand, you know, you've heard of it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's a good way to open a door for connections. So that's probably really good for people listening in is, you know, who are those influencers that you want to be, you know? And, yeah. this, and I think the great thing about social media is it just opens so many more doors, you know? And it's just about being, um, being real, being, you know, yourself and, and being consistent. And if that's someone that you want, to be a part of in your niche or market and they are someone big yeah keep pushing, you know keep pushing the paper um and the good thing about stories as well is you'll notice when you hit your instagram phone it's the first thing you see and you're at the top yeah i i did a, i did a short video um in there and i had really good reactions to it and so that on that note if if you're doing stuff like that or even if you upload a you know a quote or a tip you can upload that to stories um, but always use the hashtags because that's really important. So press on the sticker thing that gives you the hashtag option, hashtags and location. All right. So, you know, if you wanted to make sure people in New Zealand were your audience, make sure you put Auckland or New Zealand or whatever. So it comes up in that area or, you know, you want to target people in USA. Yeah. I want to target the UK and the USA and Australia. <laughs> So start putting the locations in on your stories. Nice. That's a great tip. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks, Rosalind. I'm going to um, ask you my one final question. I always ask <laughs> because I think there's a lot of us, who, a lot of people who are probably listen to the show who are first, who are just starting out in business. Um, and I know that as you're going through, you know, you've been nine years in business. It's like, if you could go back and tell your younger self when you first started out one piece of advice when you were starting out, what would that one piece of advice be? Um, it would be, <laughs> it would have been to, um, one piece of advice that would have been to be a bit more, the word, a bit more confident with my pricing as a business person. Ah. Um, that's it. You know, I think anyone that starts out in business, you always question your value and you don't actually understand, you know, you know your value, um, but you forget that your customer, you know more than your customer. That's what yeah. you um, And so I think I've lost quite a bit of money on that stance, um, you know, giving lots of value and you're not charging enough for yeah. services. So... Um, Great so advice. <laughs> being like the millennials are today, like I see them online, they are killing it online, you know, like, and they are charging hard, you know, and I've done a few courses and I've compared similar courses and some of them are amazing and charge okay money. Some of them aren't that great, but are still killing it with the money they're charging, you know? So I think if I was my younger self and had more of the millennial kind of <laughs> attitude, 
<laughs> I probably have a bit more money in the bank account today. But, <laughs> um, but Great advice. I think, yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. I think, yeah, knowing your, yeah, knowing your value, I think the building the pricing too is important because when you think about all the time that you put into something. Absolutely. I mean, I've got, I mean, I, my very first sort of client that I took on um, quite a few, a few years back and what I charged them for their social media is ridiculous. Like I wouldn't even go down the road for that price, you know, like it's just like, pick me. I can, and I do a fantastic job. I do a massively good job for them, but the price they pay, and they'll probably never get rid of me. I'll be like 90 still working. <laughs> um, we need, we need, we need to scaffold you into a little bit more. Yeah. 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 <laughs> On, um, on the final notice about Instagram, which which you guys will find, I hope um, informative, is just a bit of bit of stats, a bit of realization about Instagram, and yeah, um, it has one billion users. Wow! It has Instagram has seven hundred million monthly users. Wow! Um, and it has four hundred million daily users. Yeah. So, and then twenty six of Instagram users they earn more than seventy five k a year, right? Um, there's money there yep and 4.2 billion likes are given every single day on instagram wow 50 um, percent of instagrammers follow at least one business and five percent of instagrammers take action after being inspired by a post a like visiting a website shopping or telling a friend so um, right the last bit of information is there's only um, Thirty-six percent of marketers are using Instagram to grow their business, and less than one percent of them are doing it the right way. So, um, compared to Facebook, where um, you've got ninety-three percent of marketers on Facebook, so there's yeah. a massive scope for you guys to. So, like, especially as a smaller business, there's a lot more scope to make an impact, and that's what I noticed. I think because Facebook has become so crowded. Yeah. Right, and so many options, and it's so much harder to be seen. Where Instagram still feels like there's a bit more, um, a bit more open, a bit more opportunity to be seen and heard as a smaller business. Yeah, absolutely, and I think if you can get involved in it now and reap the, you know, reap the rewards of it. Yeah. Same. Like Thirty to six percent of marketers are using it. It's nothing. Yeah. Awesome opportunities. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great tips. I've been scrolling my little notes here for myself to get stuck into Instagram. I always do that. I, I know when it's been a great interview when I've got loads out of it myself. And I'm sure the listeners today will be um, jumping on to, to, to find out more. Now, Rosalind um, is running a going to be running another challenge soon. Am I right? Tell me about that. So I'll be running another Instagram challenge for five days. So Fiona has been in that one. Um, I'm hoping... Uh, I was going to start it next week, um, but I'm still, it's still a question mark. Sure. <laughs> and then I'm away for a week in Australia. So I'm either going to start it Monday. Yeah. Um, if I do, I can send the owner the link and yep. we can share it with you guys. Cool. Um, otherwise it'll be in two, two weeks. Awesome. I'll make sure I have all the, all the information's in the show notes. And Roslyn's also in the Business Made Easy tribe. So if you have questions, you can always tag her in the group when I put the, the link in there and we can make sure we can, I'm sure she'll jump in and answer some good questions, quick questions for you. But I highly recommend doing your challenge. Um, as I said, I had amazing results um, and we all are after those results. Awesome. Thanks for joining me today. I will sign off and um, come and join us in the tribe. Love to see you there. Love to help you make a business easier.